Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's begin to review moment of inertia. And let's go back to the definition. What is moment of inertia? Well, it's the resistance. Moment of inertia is kind of like the resistance against rotational motion. And it's defined mathematically as the mass of the object times the radius squared. Now the radius is the distance from the point of rotation to where the mass is located. Now in the case where all the mass is located, a distance of, and I guess I didn't put the distance down, so let's say r here is a distance away from this point of rotation right here, then the moment of inertia is simply the mass times that distance squared. Sometimes if the mass is not just a point mass arranged at some distance, some particular distance away from the point of rotation, but it's distributed throughout the object, then the equation becomes I is some constant times mr squared, where the constant is a number between 0 and 1. It could be equal to 1, like here, or it could be a fraction of 1. Now, again, to think about moment of inertia, let's go back to the second law, second law of Newton, F equals ma. And notice that here the mass is resistant to the acceleration. The bigger the mass, the more force you need to accelerate it. So you think of mass as sort of a resistance to acceleration, while well, moment of inertia is the resistance against rotational, or the opposition against rotational acceleration. Now, rotational acceleration is called angular acceleration, and instead of the force applied to an object like that, we apply a torque, which is the force which acts on the edge of the object, multiplied times the distance from the, where the force acts to where the point of rotation is. That's called the torque, and if we then multiply, if we then set the torque equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration, notice we get a very similar equation. Instead of force, we use torque. Instead of mass, we use moment of inertia. Instead of linear acceleration, we use angular acceleration. So, moment of inertia is kind of like the opposition or resistance to angular acceleration, just like mass is resistance to linear acceleration. So now we have some various objects on the board, and we're going to look at each one of them and see what the moment of inertia is. So in the case that all the mass is distributed at distance r away from the point of rotation, it's mr squared. Here again, here we have a hollow ring, which means that all the mass here is the distance r away from the point of rotation, so therefore i equals mr squared. It makes no difference how the mass is distributed as long as it's all of it is a distance r away from the point of rotation. But if the mass is distributed throughout the disk, let's say it's uniform distributed, it's a solid disk, then the moment of inertia is one half mr squared. If it's a hollow ball, then the moment of inertia is two thirds mr squared. If it's a solid ball with all the mass distributed uniformly throughout the ball, then the moment of inertia is two fifths mr squared. If we have a cylinder that has a hole in it like this, called a hollow cylinder, with an outer radius and an inner radius, the moment of inertia is one half m times the outer radius squared plus the inner radius squared. What if we have a thin rod? Well, the thin rod will have length l and mass m. If the rod rotates about the end of the rod, at the very end, then the moment of inertia is one third ml squared. Notice that we use l here for the length not r from the point of rotation to the, where the mass is located. So here we simply use L instead of r. But if the point of rotation is right in the middle of the rod at the center of mass, then the moment of inertia is 1 12th ml squared. What if we have a wide board instead of just a skinny rod or skinny board? Then, notice, if we rotate it about its end like this, then we notice the board has width and the board has length. In this case, the moment of inertia will be 1 3rd m times the width squared. Notice the length doesn't matter. It's all about the mass, how much mass it has. The longer you make the mass, the, the longer you make the board, the more mass you have. So that's how that length is taken care of. But the width does matter. And notice you get the very same equation as here. So instead of having the length away from the point of rotation, you have the width going away from the point of rotation. What if the point of rotation is right at the center mass? Well, notice then the moment of inertia will be 1 12 times the mass times the the sum of the width squared plus the length squared. So essentially, you have this equation in the one direction and then this equation in the other direction. And that makes sense if you think about it, and that is how it's done. 